ME204, Potential and Kinetic Energy of a Particle. We've already talked about the different pieces of energy for a particle. We have kinetic energy, which we represent with one half the mass times the velocity squared, potential energy, potential energy due to gravity, mass times the gravity times the height, and the potential energy due to springs, which is one half the spring constant times the displacement squared. Now let's put all of this together. If you think about a financial bank account and how you deal with your finances, you have an initial balance and then you put money into your account or you take money from your account and you make deposits or withdrawals. After you've made deposits or withdrawals, your balance changes. So you have a final balance. So an initial balance plus or minus deposits and withdrawals gives you a final balance. Energy is much the same way. We have an initial amount of energy, we add or subtract non-conservative work to the system, and we end up with final energy. In our case, our initial energy consists of kinetic energy and potential energy. We add or subtract non-conservative work, and then we have our final kinetic energy and final potential energy. Substituting in what we have for kinetic energy and potential energy, our equation becomes one-half mass times the initial velocity squared plus one-half the spring constant times the initial displacement squared plus mass times the gravity times the initial height plus or minus our work the integral of our force with respect to position. All of that will be equal to one half our mass times our final velocity squared plus one half our spring constant times our final displacement squared plus our mass times our gravity times our final height. Sometimes we can choose a system where there's no external work performed on the system. In this case, our work term drops out of the equation and we have conservation of energy. The energy that we have initially is the same as our final energy. The only difference is, is that our energy may move from kinetic to potential or vice versa. Here's an example. If we hold a ball at a height h and then release the ball, what happens to the potential energy of the ball in the absence of air resistance as the ball drops? Initially, all of the energy is potential energy, a mass times gravity times the initial height. When we drop the ball, at the bottom of our height, all of the energy has been converted to kinetic energy, one-half mass times the velocity squared. All potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. Note that if we looked at what the energy was like halfway down the drop, half of the potential energy is still there, and half of it has been converted to kinetic energy. So at the halfway point, our equation would be mass times gravity times the initial height is equal to mass times gravity times height 2 plus one half the mass times the final velocity squared. Here's another example. Let's figure out how fast block A is traveling after it's fallen two feet from rest. We have the weight of A is 15 pounds and the weight of B is 5 pounds. Notice that we have two masses in this case, so we're going to have to have a term or terms for each mass. Let's start with our energy equation. Our initial energy plus or minus non-conservative work equals final energy. Here are all of our terms. In this case, there's no external forces acting on the system. There's no friction, we're neglecting air resistance, and the force at the top of the pulley is not applied over a distance. So we can immediately eliminate our work from the equation. Also notice that there are no springs in this system. So we can eliminate the spring term from both sides of the equation. We also note that this system starts from rest, so there's no initial velocity. Now rewriting the equation with the terms that we have left and representing each mass, we end up with this equation. The mass times the gravity times the initial height of A plus the mass times gravity times the initial height of B is equal to the mass times gravity times the final height of A plus the mass times gravity times the final height of B plus one half the mass times the final velocity of a squared plus one half the mass times the final velocity of b squared. Let's establish some datums so that we can decide what the heights are for a and b. We'll write a datum for a and we'll put that one in this case at the bottom of the two feet that it's going to drop. Let's put the datum for b right at the bottom of b. If we put the datum for b at the bottom of block b then the initial height of b is zero so this term drops out. The final height of A will be zero. After it's dropped two feet, it reaches the datum. So we can drop on the right side of the equation the mass times gravity times the height of A term. We also need to note the length of the cable, which is equal to two times SB plus SA, if we only look at the lengths that are changing. If we take the derivative of this with respect to position, then two times the change in B plus the change in A is equal to zero. This gives us a relationship between the height of A and the height of B. So we can now write our equation, substituting in what we know. Mass times gravity for A is the weight of A, which is 15 pounds, times the initial height of A, which is two feet, 
is equal to the mass times gravity of B, which is the weight of B, or 5 pounds, times the final height of B, which is 1 foot, because we have that 2 to 1 relationship. When A goes down 2 feet, B goes up 1 foot, plus the kinetic energy associated with A, which is 1 half the mass of A, which would be the weight divided by gravity, or 15 pounds divided by 32.2 feet per second squared, times the final velocity of A squared, plus the kinetic energy of block B, which is 1 half the mass of B, which is the weight of B divided by gravity, or 5 pounds divided by 32.2 feet per second squared, times the final velocity of B squared. Now we have two unknowns, so we need another relationship to be able to solve this problem. If we take the derivative of our change in position relationship, we get a velocity relationship. So twice the velocity of b plus the velocity of a is equal to zero, or the velocity of a is equal to twice the velocity of b. However, we're looking for the velocity of a, so we're going to substitute in the velocity of b being equal to one half the velocity of a. Now we have one equation with one unknown the final velocity of A. Solving for that velocity, we get that the velocity of A is equal to 9.95 feet per second. Our next topic is particle kinetics using non-conservative work.